Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's Ghost Lighting Theater in the Dark. I'm Kathy Wing, Artistic Director of the Randall Theater Company. I am here again in our temporary headquarters in the corner of my living room. We have got some great stuff for you this week, including a look at a really fun visit I had with actress, dancer, and stage manager extraordinaire Ella Diaz. Also, Chapter 3 of our virtual staged reading of Cam Duncan and the Dilemma of the Doctor's Wife. We'll take a look at the entries for this week's Randall Challenge and find out who wore it best in our costume challenge. And, of course, another really great theater game for you and your family or housemates, whoever you've got at home with you. But wait, there's more! I actually always wanted to say that. There's a new feature coming to Ghost Lighting, so be sure to stick around and find out what it is. But now, Ella Diaz has been singing, dancing, and acting for just about her entire life. She's in demand both as an actress and as a talented stage manager. We sat down for a little Zoom chat not long ago and we had a really great time, aside from a slight equipment problem. Well, you'll see what I mean. Here's Ella Diaz. So I am here with Ella Diaz and I am just, I am so glad to see you. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm better now that I get to see you, Kathy. It's been so long. You look fantastic. <laughs> so, um, so how, how have you been doing? I've been doing all right. Just, you know, trying to keep busy. Um, I'm still working. So doing that whole thing and, you know, just trying to keep sane during all this, you know. <laughs> I know it is, it is so crazy. And I think for us as theater people, we're used to like going to rehearsal and getting ready for shows and yep. we, don't, we don't get to do that right now. And so no, yeah. what are some of the things that you're doing right now to keep yourself occupied while, while you're at home? Um, I'm very lucky that I actually like the people that I live with. <laughs> I live with my brother and his, um, fiance wife practically and she's just great i absolutely adore her and her and i alexis and i we have started our own kind of fun project um we call it dead but delicious and oh. it combines um it combines her baking skills with my knowledge of horror special effects and um props management and we create basically dessert models of famous like horror movie villains and you know favorite kills and things like that so <laughs> wow I mean that's and that's something that I haven't really heard of before so that it, it that's really quite fascinating so. it's yeah it started off as just kind of you know I was watching a um a documentary about Tom Savini who is like one of the pioneers of like horror special effects and I was just like oh that'd be really cool I've never ever seen anyone do that with like you know, desserts or anything. So I wonder how that would kind of be a thing. So we actually, um, we're, we're starting as an Instagram page. Um, go to Instagram, um, at dead, but delicious bake. And, um, our first project is up. Um, it's based on the cartoon network, um, series over the garden wall. Um, the villain, the beast. So that's amazing and creative. And it's just, I've, I've never heard of that. And so Thanks. that's Yay. Cool. Yeah, real excited about it. So Ella, how did you get started in theater? Give it a well, that sounds awesome. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just, we got, we got, we got ghosts in here. What's, okay. what's the system looking like over there? What's, you got tape, you've got, what's going on? <laughs> I do. I'll take a picture and send it to you. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> so anyway, yes, this is a high class operation that we have going here. Yeah, right. absolutely. So tell me again, how you got started in theater? Uh, I did ballet when I was um, super young, like three or four years old. And then my stepdad, has always been a part of theater and he was a part of a production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat in 1996, I think. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, right. <laughs> and the, um, the play after that was going to be Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe. They put me up on stage. I, I sang happy birthday for my audition song. Oh, and, my God. Uh, 
they thought I was so cute. So I got cast as the hedgehog and it just kind of took off from there. My, my love of theater and performing and being the center of attention. So <laughs> what have been some of your favorite shows that you've oh, yeah. been a part of? Um, they've all been my favorite just because of, you know, who I've met and who I've gotten to work with and the, um, the skills that I've built, like, um, a Christmas story. Like I met you, that was our first show together. And, yeah. um, Jacqueline Hyde was fantastic. All those great people, um, comedy of tenors. And then of course, Forbidden Broadway. We're going to talk to Ella a little bit more about Forbidden Broadway in just a minute. That's the show that kept her busy, both acting and stage managing at the same time. Pretty amazing. But first, we know that most people are spending a lot more time at home these days, so we wanted to know, what percentage of your time right now are you spending in pajama pants? Take a look at what some of our Randall Theater fam had to say. Hundred percent. I am going through my entire inventory of sweatpants slash pajama pants uh, every day. <laughs> I would have to say 80% of the time. Um, zero. Oh, I'm in Hawaii. We don't wear pants. 80. <laughs> <laughs> Probably 90%. Do scrubs count as pajama pants? 100%. 100% of my time then. <laughs> if sweats count, I would say about 80%. None. I actually do not own any pajama pants. About 30%. I'm still pretty much not as much in pajama pants as I would like to be. Yes, Forbidden Broadway. We definitely need to talk about Forbidden Broadway because <laughs> not only an actress, also an amazing stage manager and we've we've been privileged to see see you in both of those roles and the thing that was cool about Forbidden Broadway is that you kind of got to do both at the same time and I swear I it was not my intention to try to trick you in being stage manager <laughs> <laughs> I felt a little tricked because I mean we were what like three-ish weeks, like, you know, before opening. And then Brant was just kind of like, hey, who's our stage manager? Is it Ella? Because she should get stage manager credit. And I was like, oh, I haven't been doing anything. I'm so sorry, guys. Like, <laughs> no, you, uh. <laughs> you were perfect. You were perfect. It was so much fun to, it was. I, I thought, I thought that show was a lot of fun. And to see you, mm -hmm kind of wrangling stuff backstage and you know we didn't start out saying hey Ella's gonna be our stage manager but that was the role that you were playing in the show and so it, so you naturally and because of who you are you took on some of those dudes just because you're a, a good person and and oh thought that we desperately needed help and so <laughs> really appreciated it but I hope you had fun in that show too oh so much fun it's probably the most fun I've had in a show just being able to stretch like both of those legs, both the stage manager and the actor side of it. And we had a phenomenal cast, like, you know, Austin, Brant, Miranda, Alyssa, just yeah. absolutely beautiful talent. Yeah. Well, I think what was some, some of the best moments in that show were things that were not scripted because you guys did a lot of ad living and a lot, <laughs> and, and you all just sort of, you all just sort of meshed with each other and, mm -hmm make those improvisational moments just happen and just look really mm -hmm. spontaneous and a lot of it was spontaneous and watching that show every night it was different every night and that mm -hmm. was and that's what made it fun absolutely um, and i think that's a lot of credit to also you as a director like you know how to guide people but you also know how to let them have fun and you have a knack for casting people in roles that they're fantastic for and just getting a really great like cohesive group of people together to make a phenomenal show so kudos to you as well for bringing us together and being our fearless leader <laughs> oh wasn't always fearless thank you for okay. being a part yeah thank you for asking me i appreciate it
Hi, everybody, and uh, it's Bree and John, and, you know, we're mixing things up by wearing hats uh, today, so, you know, if you're running out of things to, ways to mix things up, uh, this is going to help you out, all right? This is a theater game that's kind of different from what you, you normally learn when you're doing improv stuff. So in improv scenes, if you ask a question, it's not really great because the other person in the scene then has to answer that question, so unless you're being real strategic about it, it's not often good to answer, or to ask questions, but... This game is called the question game because that's all we're doing is asking questions because you have to think, you have to be on your toes all the time um, because if you respond to the person um, and it's not in a question, you're out. So the, the trick is to keep the story going, but you can only ask questions. So we'll uh, we'll demonstrate and if it goes real quick, we can do another round, but you can see how easy it is. You can play with two people, you can play with five people, just go around in a, a circle or a, a rhombus, whatever you want to do. Um, okay, so... Uh, Brianna, what is your favorite sport? Do you think I play sports? What is your favorite way to absorb sports? you like to watch it or play? Why do I have to absorb sports at all? Okay, so I don't have anything for that. I am out. Uh, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so, you know, you can keep going. and you, Obviously, you can play it if you have, you know, 30 seconds to spare. Maybe you're, you know, muted a boring commercial or something. Or maybe you're looking for something to do and you can go around and play for a half hour. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. So that's the question game. And uh, we'll be back next week with more games you can play at home to, you know, mix it up if you run out of hats. Previously on Cam Duncan and the Dilemma of the Doctor's Wife by Amy Lynn Carter. Private Detective Cam Duncan is going through a rough patch. He hasn't had a case to work on for a while, and even his secretary, Sally, is feeling the pinch. I know things are tough right now, but, well, it's been four weeks since I've been paid, and I was just wondering... I just wrote you a check just last week, didn't I? Actually, it was three weeks ago, and that check bounced. Police detective Albert Locke drops in to ask for help on a murder case, and Cam is hopeful that his luck is about to change. I'm afraid I got a rather delicate situation on my hands. I hope I can count on your discretion. But Cam is about to learn that this case is anything but simple. Finding the evidence that would convict Rose McKenzie is my job. And the fact is, I have acquired some highly incriminating evidence. What I need you to do to find a way to prove her innocence. But as any good private eye knows, things are never quite what they seem. Come on, Locke. If even half of what they said in the paper is true, she did it for sure. You gotta know that. It's no joke, Duncan. Rose is innocent. After a long night of poring over stacks of evidence files, Cam begins to question Inspector Locke's judgment about Rose McKenzie. That is, until a mysterious visitor appears at his door. I'm sorry for disturbing you so early in the morning, uh, but may I come in? Uh, yes, please. <clears throat> uh, do I know you, Miss... Uh... It's Mrs., actually. Mrs. Frank McKenzie. Rose. And now, the Randall Theater and the Ghostlight Players present Chapter 3 of Cam Duncan and the Dilemma of the Doctor's Wife by Amy Lynn Carter. Featuring Megan Kirby as Rose McKenzie and David Alonzo Rodriguez as Private Detective Cam Duncan. Well, maybe you could tell me your side of things. What happened the night your husband was killed? You're very direct. I like that. I think you have the police report in my statement. It's all there. Yes, but as an investigator, I find it's best to gather my own information before drawing a conclusion. Of course, I should have realized. It's simple, really. I've been accused of killing my husband. I didn't do it. Tell me what happened that day, starting with your visit to his office in the afternoon. So you know about that? Yes, as you said, I have the police report. It was quite ridiculous, really. <laughs> I've been wanting to redecorate the sitting room and the dining room in our home. They were quite in need of updating. I came by Frank's office to ask for money to make some purchases. I don't have any money of my own, you see. Uh, well, at least I didn't at that time. I asked, he said no, and we quarreled. Frank raised his voice. When we came out of his office, I could see by the look on Mrs. Bertinelli's face that she had heard him. I was angry when I left. 
But after walking around for a while, I realized that I was being unreasonable. Frank usually stays at the office after hours, so I decided to go back and apologize and see if we could go out for a late dinner together. Mrs. Bertinelli was gone, so I went straight into his office, and that's when, that's when I saw him lying on the floor. She is sobbing now. Cam fumbles in his pockets for a handkerchief. He finds a crumpled one and hands it to her. Thank you. There was blood everywhere and a gun. I must have picked it up without thinking. And then Mrs. Bertinelli walked in and she looked at me and I think she asked if I had called the police, but I couldn't answer, I couldn't speak. Then she went out to the other room and called them. But when the officers got there, they were saying the most awful things, asking me why I killed my husband. <laughs> and that's when Albert arrived. Albert? Yes, uh, Inspector Locke. He was so kind to me and... She rises and she goes to him. Mr. Duncan, uh, Cam. You have to believe me. I didn't kill my husband. I, I loved him. She puts her head on his chest and weeps. Cam clearly doesn't know quite what to do. I had wanted to talk to Rose McKenzie, and her showing up at my door saved me the trouble of tracking her down. Unfortunately, that visit raised more questions than it answered, especially about the nature of her involvement with Locke. It wasn't like him to lose his head over his skirts. Even a looker like Rose, <clears throat> Mrs. McKenzie. One thing was certain. Locke was in over his head and I needed to know why. But that would have to wait until later. Right now, it was time for a chat with Nurse Margaret Bertinelli. Be sure to come back next week for Chapter 4. I have a feeling that Cam Duncan is about to get a clue that will crack this case wide open. And now for this week's Randall Challenge. We asked you to transform yourself into characters from plays and musicals using items you already had at home and then send them to us without any explanation. Our challenge was to know who those characters were. Let's take a look at what some of you came up with. Okay, those were all amazing. I might need to borrow some things from you. Great job, everybody. This week's semi-fabulous prize of a gift card to the Human Bean Coffee Stand goes to... Congratulations, and now get ready. Here's our next Randall Challenge. Are you wearing one of those face masks when you go out? Or do you have one around your house that you should be wearing? Or maybe somebody else in your house has one. Grab one from somewhere and give it a fashion upgrade. Decorate it, bling it out, make it pretty, scary, funny, whatever you want. Here's what I mean. Those are really great, but I think you can do better. So decorate your mask, then snap a photo of the mask, wearing it if possible, and email it to kathywing.randalltheater at gmail.com and put mask challenge in the subject line. Be creative, because as you know, somebody's going to win a semi-fabulous prize. Okay, one more thing. We'd like to start something new here at Ghost Lighting. We're calling it our Public Domain Concert Series. So here's what we're thinking. Go online and find a list of public domain songs. There's all kinds of them out there. Pick one, learn it, and make a video of yourself performing it. You might be surprised how many familiar songs you'll find. Then... Send your video to me at the same email address, kathywing.randalltheater at gmail.com. 
You can send it at the same time as your face mask pictures if you want. Yes, that is a hint. But above all, have fun. Okay, I know that sounds like a lot going on, but here at Ghost Lighting, we're just gonna throw a bunch of spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. We're trying lots of things. And it's all because we at the Randall Theater Company just wanna do what we can to help keep you entertained and involved. So, if you like what we're doing here, and if you are able, we would love it if you would support the Randall Theater with a donation. Just follow the link at the bottom of your screen or look for the donate button at randalltheater.com. And of course, you can catch up on all of our ghost lighting shows anytime on the Randall Theater Company Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time, but until then, we'll keep the ghost light on for you. Mm -hmm.